I forgive the juries, the judge, and the prosecutors, and God will prevail the truth. Also, I think that the influence of the media has been having tremendous effects on this case. Thank you. Would there be an appeal? Definitely a devastating day because my sister is innocent of all the charges that she was convicted. And we are certain that she is innocent. And I know that only time will prove it to you guys. I know that everyone wanted answers. I know that maybe the state is happy that they finally convicted her or someone is paying for the price, but she's not the right one. We still don't know what happened to Jennifer. We're all mothers and we all love, as you can see, Michelle has been supported by us, her family and friends from day one. And we continue standing here because we do care to know the truth of what happened to Jennifer, but we don't know what happened to Jennifer. And choosing and putting my sister as the guilty person is not the right thing to do because she's innocent. So we will appeal and we will not stop fighting for her justice that this sole country has apparently promised to us. And I met them. I know them. They, were, they are beautiful kids. So is my niece. She was never separated from my mom, from my sister, my niece. It, my sister is all her world for my niece. Have some compassion. I mean, your heart, look inside your heart. We cannot live in a world this, with this much hate. My sister is innocent. This is wrong. This wasn't a fair trial from day one. Wasn't a fair trial. And you all know that because you are parents. You are moms. You are grandparents. Please, look inside your heart. Well, to answer the question that hasn't been asked, I'm truly disappointed in this verdict. I don't believe that this was the correct verdict. I'm not going to criticize this jury that sat through six, seven weeks of evidence and reached their determination. I just happen to disagree with their determination. The, um, to answer another question that hasn't been asked, um, Michelle is devastated. Um, her daughter has been informed. Her daughter was not here. Um, her whole family is devastated. Um, I heard some of what they said. Uh, you know, I, I've been doing this a long time, and you know, it's not like I'm cynical or hard-boiled about this, but I truly just don't see how the jury could have reached this verdict. We intend to first file post-trial motions. One of them is going to be for a judgment of acquittal notwithstanding the verdict. And there will be many, many issues uh, we'll present even before sentencing. We will also be preparing for sentencing. There's a lot of support. Michelle has a lot of support. And um, people will be submitting letters and we'll be preparing for a May 31st court date. So if people have questions, um, I'll answer a few, although I don't really feel like it. Your name and title? Did you say you will be appealing? Well, the first step is to file post-trial motions for new trial where I list any number of reasons why the trial itself was not fair. Some of the issues predate the actual trial, going back to the hearings that took place in the fall, some of the rulings that go back a couple of years. So it's going to be uh, a post-trial motion that lists all of those things. Normally those are pro forma, meaning you file it just to file it. I believe that many of those issues have merit and only if those are denied and Michelle is sentenced, you then file an appeal and the question is what do you argue on, argue on appeal? In my view, it's not just whether there are any issues, it's which ones not to argue because of how many errors I think there were in this process. Is she going to bond out today? 
it appears that the amount is too high for the bondsman to be able to post without getting additional surety approval. So it appears she will not be getting out today. Um, we hope that she'll be getting out in the next few days, but it's not going to happen today. She is going to be going to uh, York and Niantic. So what does a uh, prison time look like for Mr. Cohen? Uh, I don't want to even speculate. Um, the maximum penalty has been set forth, but you know, it's somebody with no criminal record. Um, she is not accused of uh, herself of uh, harming anybody, but it's serious charges that she's been found guilty of, so uh, it could be uh, several years. John, after the, after the playback of testimony from the friend, and then yesterday's question, what was your mindset as you arrived in court today? Well, I thought that the question of when they wanted to hear back from uh, Clara Duperon was favorable, um, the way, though, that they asked the question, did, did um, the jury feel that you actually had to physically uh, touch any of the uh, items in order to be guilty of tampering? I didn't particularly like that question, but as I, I think I said yesterday, because the definition of accessory was separated from the charges of accessory to commit an offense, I thought it could be neutral. So I don't speculate and go, oh, that's a good question, that's a bad question. You know, you could sit there all night and think, well, why are they asking that question? It could be one person wanted to know. They just didn't know that statute 53A-8 meant accessory. Um, the only other thing that if I can, you know, I have a, you know, a, a wider audience here is that people, in my view, should never sit down with the police for an interrogation. They should never do it because people forget it's not just things that are bad that can be used against you, it's anything can be used against you. And that's what I feel was done here. The do you have any feels... insight on the strategy that was in play at that time in June of I, 2019? I have no insight as to why any lawyer without either an immunity agreement or a proffer agreement would walk their client into a police interrogation without knowing very much about the offense. Now, that's me, so you might want to ask the lawyer that did that. At least we know one other lawyer, that for Mr. Gumieni, got an immunity agreement in order to have his client cooperate. That is the strategy that would have been the more appropriate, in my view, again, um, reasonable action for, uh, for a lawyer to take. But you're going to have to ask that attorney why he did what he did. In, in my mind? view, the entire case, and even as closing argument set forth, was based on what she said to the, to the police during these hours and hours of interrogation. And I guess the jury did not accept the fact that people are not fluent in, in English or who are tired or badgered are told lies and then asked to, uh, now what do you think? Now are you willing to admit that you didn't uh, act truthfully before? Um, you know, you can draw negative adverse inferences from that. Just in my view, it shouldn't be enough to find someone guilty. But again, that's my view. In hindsight, should she have taken stand? This was not a fair trial. What do you think? It is not for me to decide whether a trial is fair or not. I believe these jurors were fair based on the evidence that was allowed to come in and the way that things were instructed. My issue will be whether or not the rulings that allowed in certain evidence, that allowed in hearsay in my view, were incorrect and therefore this there was a due process violation and errors that would entitle uh, Michelle to a new trial. But, you know, I'm not going to get into questions of fairness and whatnot. That's not really my role. In hindsight, should she have taken the stand? You know, in hindsight, as I argued in my closing argument, hindsight is can be 2020, right? 
Um, I don't know if it would have mattered. The jury got to hear an unbelievable number of hours of unfettered interrogation. She answered questions till they had no more questions. Some of those questions, in fact, were posed by her lawyer in those uh, recorded interrogations. So whether or not she needed to say anything, what could she say that she had not said during those interrogations? They would have just asked her, well, you said this on this date and this on that date. She answered every one of their questions. My view, she shouldn't have said anything, but that's, that's what I look for in hindsight. I did not represent Michelle at that point. But we'll go forward. We're going to uh, um, challenge whether or not the, the trial had errors that should be reconsidered, and if not reconsidered in this court, then we'll go to the appellate or Supreme Court. Thank you. Thank Is you. the contempt hearing still on for Tuesday? I'm not involved. You're going to have to talk to Attorney Frost, who represents um, um, Michelle in that case. That, that's all I know. I'm not going to be here on that day.